Hello every everybody and welcome to coaching the super mega ultra VIP in Sugar Daddy, Last Frogman. Hello, Hello Last Frogman. Hello Jimmy, how you doing? I'm doing okay, thanks. <laughs> I've been doing recently a lot better because I was only watching Blood Bowl instead of having to play it. Because <laughs> um, we all know it's better to watch than to play. Right, so... Um, I chose to kick, receive, obviously not kick, because, I don't know, I guess I don't care so much about the result. Um, I think if I was trying to win at all costs, I would have kicked, but, um, you know, in a normal game, I guess a draw is fine. So, receiving against Orcs gives me more chance of a draw, of just getting, you know, having a drive with 11 players on the pitch um, gives me more chance. Right, setting up wise... There's a few ways you could do it. You could go like rule of five, or you could go the Fash Diamond. Are you familiar with these setups? I kind of know the rule of five, but Fash one sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah, the Fash one is um, is essentially to try and like you know deny the sidelines a bit. Um, it's I guess it's too hard to like explain how to do it in even with a pause. Um, rule of five is fine though, so. I, yeah, this is not good. Is it? I, I need to do a setup guide. Um, <laughs> um, do I have it? Yeah, maybe you could do it. You see these blitzers you've got? If you swap, if you see like the square of four there, if you swap where they are in that square, if you see what I mean, so they're in, they're in the squares where they're not. Yeah, and then you make so you know screen two squares in between. If you would then put. So the black oak two squares across. If you've got the stream stream open, you can see as well, which is the best way, I guess. If you have the stream open too. Um, you you want back one and then left or right one. This is very easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not like chess where. Yeah, moves I should have kicked. To be fair, no, you you definitely oh, you definitely only want three on the LOS. So you want four mans it? No, you don't want to all mans it. I mean, to be honestly, you 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 honestly could all mans it against humans, but I don't think it's a a good thing to do, as you know by default. Really, so you've got these two in a diagonal, yeah. You want to go two to the two squares away from them, do another diagonal with the black orcs. That would be. But yeah, there you go. That's that's in the right yeah. spot. Yeah, perfect. Got it. <laughs> uh, they'll swap those two, you know, so that it's symmetrical. And then seeing as you have the orc thrower, this is one reason why I don't like him, right? You don't want him on the LOS because he's armor 8. So I would swap um, the back black orcs with the orc thrower and the lineman. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. You could if you want swap the black orc with any like a black orc with a blitzer to like make the side stronger. Um you know to try, try to stop breakthroughs, but I generally don't do that. Um so it's good you because these don't are have a thrower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gonna cut two of them, man. Yeah, the orc throwers, they're, they're good. I mean, no, to be fair, look, on a starting team, the orc thrower does does do something. Um, it does make the th pickups easier and stuff, but what I don't like is he stops your, black, your blitzers scoring touchdowns, which stops them getting star player points, and kind of like, you know, is worse for the team in the long run, I think. <laughs> Um, but obviously, he is going to help win some games, especially versus like you know Wood Elves and shit like that. I'm gonna have to do one dice blocks here and stuff. Fucking humans! Right. So. So yes. So for the benefit of people on YouTube, Last Frogman has played about four games of Blood Bowl. So, hasn't read the rules, because rulebooks are for nerds. 
<laughs> but I would exactly. recommend. I would recommend reading the rule books, and uh, I'll put a link to the rule book in the YouTube video. That seems a good idea. Um, because I think it is worth it to to read. By the way, it? this only costs fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah. Only fifty. <laughs> only fifty. That's true. Great deal. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah I, I don't know i mean so like so knowing some things would be useful you know like knowing the agility table and everything um because stuff like that isn't really coaching is it it's just it's just literally read the rules there's a bit of an annoying kick there out of range for the air thrower so that's that's kind of changed where i'm going to blitz and everything so the, the, I would say the main thing of Blood Bowl, if you're new, is on defense, is just simply maximize the two dice blocks you can make and minimize the two dice blocks your opponents can make. So for example, I hit from, and this, this is a great blitz here, <laughs> um, because if I'd powed, I would have kept him in a tackle zone so he couldn't just go where he wanted next turn. You know, like, you'd have to stand up and then he would be stuck after he stood up. But because I've just got the push, I don't want to give away a free block. So the push is away from my guys. Um, God, this is... Yeah, I think... I don't have to make a block with a fucking ogre. So I'm going to go for the one dice block with this guy. Yeah. Pow. Classic. Classic noob play there. I wouldn't recommend making one dice blocks normally, but against orcs with the strength four in the right spot, it wasn't really a choice. Also, blocking straight forward like this isn't normally ideal, but again, not too many options against. Uh... So again, so because if it had been a push, it would have been straight back because it's how can limit his movement next turn. To Kaz. Kaz. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. This is how you do it. See, there, there's, there's straight away, that's what you need to do. Just make Kaz. And you're pretty happy. Alright, so. I did want to strengthen that up because I might fail the pickup. I only got two rerolls, so I don't really want to reroll this pickup, even though it's going to be horrible when I fail. <laughs> because they can put a lot of pressure on here. Black Orc ready to go in. This Black Orc can go one, two, three, four and get in. So both Black Orcs. Like, so now, so yeah, on, in your situation here, I would say if I fail a pickup, you want to put as many guys, you know, blitz one of these guys and try to get people in. If I make the pickup though, then it's not so appealing to crash into that way. But we'll see what happens. No, oh, made the pickup. Outrageous. Yeah, so that was a that was a pretty lucky pickup. Right, can end the turn now, I guess. Shame that I can't see from this thing. So yeah, so so looking at your turn, right? Your first thing is gonna think. The first thing is safe moves first, obviously. You 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 want to make moves without dice if you can. Um, moves without dice rolls. Obviously, there isn't any important ones. You can think about screening, but it's not super important at the moment. Um, the main thing is just making a two dice blitz, choosing where you're going to blitz and who's going to do it. And obviously you want to make the blitz with a block guy because he's got block and it's better. Um, you can choose between hitting a, a positional blitz, like you know wh where the blitz is going to have the most impact positionally, or just an attrition blitz. Or, and then the attrition blitz you've got to decide between hitting a guy without block for the 75% knockdown or a better player, which would be the Blitzer, for a 55% knockdown. You know, so like, go for someone more valuable with less chance or not. And also think about follow-up blocks as well. So, for example, you could Blitz one guy, uh, my player number something, eight. If you hit him diagonally, you could you could then hit him into a black hole for another, blitz, another block afterwards. Stuff like that is worth considering. But really, I would just think about you know, hit and running really, you could uh, you could pick somebody off, you know, and just uh, not really commit too much because you don't want to give up more blocks, especially as you're down a player on turn one. <laughs> kind of just want to sit back and go for a blitz. 
yeah, I, I would, I would, um, yeah, I would just, I would just pretty much sit tight where you are now and just try to go for nutrition blitz. Yeah, I think. I mean, you you could go all in if you wanted, but I just feel, especially if you've got a guy stunned, you know, with a guy stunned, my ogre isn't boneheaded. Um, I would just blitz somebody with a two dice blitz with block is your is your best bet if you can do that somewhere. And I think where it is doesn't matter too much as long as it's... You know how assists work, don't you? Yeah, kind of. Kind of? <laughs> Just put them there and you smack them. Yep, that's perfect. There you go, very good. Um, Dead. So yeah, got him. Um, didn't matter because he was cast, but I would have put him in the tackle zone of the other blitzer, so that next turn all I could have done was stand him up. You know, I wouldn't have been able to move him around. Um, but that's that's a great turn, I think, for the for the orcs there. Yeah, learning tackles is one of the most important elements. Yeah. So um, so yeah, you know so. Have you, have you got the stream open, Last Frogman? I do, yeah. Right, good. So if, if we look at my player here, Harold Adva. <laughs> well, no, we could, do it with, we could do it with Last Frogman's guy, actually. Jam Toast. So, ah, no. <laughs> we'll do it with this guy. So you can see there the squares around my guy are yellow. And that's because he has got... The, he, he doesn't have a tackle zone. He has eight separate tackle zones. And every, you know, you've got to be in one of the tackle zones of the defending player to assist, which is what he was. Um, but not in anybody else's tackle zone. So if this blitzer had been one to the right, he couldn't have assisted because he'd have been in his tackle zone. Um, and when you move through tackle zones, if you leave a tackle zone, you make a dodge. You don't make a dodge to go into a tackle zone. So, yeah, looking here, there's tackle zones all across. Um, so the only way I'm going to break through really is if I blitz this blitzer and then go, you know, push him. He won't have a side, there won't be one down the sideline. That, that's not bad. You know, a lot of people make G, would make a GFI to, to stop that, get a guy there to stop it. But, you know, you really, really don't have to. I think a lot of people overreact with, you know, positionally. I think you just need to keep more or less, uh, you know, parallel to where the offense is. Now, and also in Blood Bowl, you're not just trying to score a touchdown, you're trying to score a touchdown on turn 8. Um, it would be a lot easier if all you had to do was score a touchdown. But, if you just try to score a touchdown, like in the beginner it might be okay to just try and score a touchdown and then see what happens on defence. Um, and it might be that, you know, uh, a more experienced player may stall and uh, stall with turn 8. But if, if you're not confident of stalling, then obviously, you know... Scoring is better than not scoring at all. Right, I'll just do a dumbass loner blitz here because <laughs> why not? It's mighty blow, isn't it? So, I mean, I didn't care if he boneheaded, and I really didn't care if he both down there. But that knockdown is pretty good, isn't it? I can actually, after saying I didn't care about breaking through, I can actually break through quite a bit here. So, but I don't think it's necessarily right that I'm trying to break through. It's a funny old game, Blood Bowl. It's hard because so much is like situational. And very, very little is black and white. Pretty much the only things that are black and white is, you know, when you're trying to score on turn 16. That's pretty much the only the only time when you can actually say this is a right move. And that's only if you're trying to win at all costs as well. Humans are pretty crap. I, I, I am a player up here. No, I'm not, because the guy got cast straight away, didn't he? Nearly a player up. <laughs> but I just hate all the strength. It's not not good. Also, orcs are slow, so by committing to one side, um, I, f 
think that's not a bad idea. One, two, three. So you need to check, obviously, if people can run around and hit your ball carrier easily. Very important to not give someone a free hit on the ball. One, two, three, four, five. GFI, GFI. So I think this guy's safe here. All you can do is be based. One, two, three, four, five. GFI, GFI. It'd be dodging two GFIs just to base him, so I don't think that's worth it. Um. So right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It is Infrared Augustus says here, reading the rule book sections for tackle zones and block assists are probably something even a person who doesn't really want to read rule book should read. Yeah, because it's just so much easier to do that. Yeah. Um. Why didn't I follow? Was that here? Because he would. I think if I followed, I'd have been in much, much greater risk, risk of getting surfed. Um, even though I didn't put somebody in the position there to get surfed, so maybe I should have followed. Um, if I had thought ahead, if I had planned my turn more, and I knew I was going to put all these, but I didn't know I was going to stun him though. I didn't know I was going to stun him. Um. So that changed things. I think. I think. I think it's because I, I didn't follow because I wasn't necessarily going to push through. And I think when I stunned him, that's when I decided to push through. I think that's why I didn't follow. Um, so yeah, you got to think about that. You got. You know, you can't assume you're going to break armor. Um, so yeah. So seeing as there's still time in my turn here, I would say, um, you know, try to probably blitz this guy, the guy who's kind of out the furthest, and just crush in and and try to you know keep it more or less parallel, is what I would try to do. Um, and yeah, again, you know, like, I don't know, it's fucking hard. Just ask questions, and then... <laughs> if you want to ask questions, that would be good. Jimmy Fantastic, best coach? Is Jimmy Fantastic the best coach? Best Obviously. coach. Obviously. <laughs> Only coach. Silly question. Best coach all times in all formats of Blood Bowl. <laughs> I'm actually not very highly rated in tabletop just because I've hardly played on tabletop and played I've played just some random teams as well. So I'm not actually rated highly on tabletop. Not rated highly online that highly. Decently highly online, but again online I've used Wood Elves and Undead, so my rating is split between the two, so it's lower than it would be if I'd only used one race. So it, it's a bit weird how NAF rankings work. But obviously I've been top top ranked on Fumble and uh been had various teams top ranked on Blood Bowl 2. So I'm not bad. I'm not bad at Blood Bowl, I think. So here I would take the one that keeps me closer to my end zone kind of thing, you know, because you're trying to you're trying to blunt blunt the advance as much as possible. And then here, yeah, if you're thinking about whether to commit, it's whether you're going to... So, because you've committed one, um, as Fasher's coined the term half-mans, the Tyrion, you know, really, when, when you're committing players, you kind of want to go all-mans or no-mans kind of thing, you know? Going half-mans is a bit risky. This, this, this lineman, yeah, that's a good move. That, exactly where you click there, I think, is a good move. Base, base the catcher diagonally, yep. I like that move. So you have moved that, you did move that Black Orc back, the last Frogman in fact. See, so now, seeing as this was your plan, maybe you shouldn't have moved him first, or you, maybe you should move him first into contact. Um, I don't think you have to put everyone into contact now, but, you know, it's just something to think about in future. You know, screening obviously two squares in between. Um, so this Blitzer might have been better one square to the left. Oh no, because this guy's here. So th this is a good screen here. This isn't so good because they're all the tackle zones are overlapping, meaning that I can just dodge through on with one dodge if uh, if this guy isn't here. But there you go. I'm probably going overboard here. But yeah, I'd get these three guys around this area somehow, however you want. Hello, <laughs> Jelly, all in chat there. 
Um, humans are probably the most forgiving for beginners. I'm not sure about that. I think orcs, orcs are probably the most forgiving. Um, because oh, I think orcs are really good. Um, because with orcs, you've got the strength four for easy two dice blocks. And then you've got block for good two dice blocks. Um, so, for example, that, that, that black orc blitz there, right? He blitzed a non-block guy with a, with a non-block guy. But because he's strength four, it's an easy one. So you've always got that tension between maybe he's making things a little bit harder for yourself by getting a two dice with block, but then the payoff's more because you're hitting with block. So it's quite kind of good, isn't it? And you're quite slow, so your mistakes are punished, and you can learn from that when you know when they are slow. Right now, <laughs> so I think I want to blitz this lineman who's in front. And I want to block him, which I can do with the assist from him. So obviously I want to stand this guy up first. Safe moves first. Uh, can this guy run around the blitz? He can, but it'd be a GFI. So I've got to decide whether to make a two dice block with block, or a three dice without block and loner. And because I'm and mighty blow, because I'm greedy, and greed is good. I am going to go for the extra mighty blow hit. I mean, this it puts the ogre in a really good spot as well, basing two players. And now, I could blitz with either blitzer, but I'm going to take the guy who's further away. So that he, uh, he ends up in kind of a better position. Like, let's, let's see the guy get further. From further forward? Yeah. That's the one. Oh god, KO. This shouldn't happen, should it, against armor 9. <laughs> <laughs> Get on a cast from a, not many blocks at all. That gives the assist there. So now I've got quite a few people. So yes, yeah, so you could argue that maybe should have. Oh my god! <laughs> this is a, this is a good lesson that Armour Nine <laughs> is uh, is shit. Fucking Tony, stop being shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, thanks Tony. Yeah, so that was stupid, wasn't it really, that turn? Um, very swingy, his blood ball. Um, but I'm now, yeah... Getting banged he... on. Pardon? Getting banged on. Getting banged on, absolutely. It does happen. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, arguably you could have put, you know, more in front there. Um, once you put a bit in front, maybe you should have put more in front. But again, it's it's hard to say anything's right or wrong, isn't it? <laughs> Sounds a bit of a shit, <laughs> shit culture. It's hard to say what's right and what's wrong, but it really is. So yeah, I got the this so this screen here for the ball carrier. Oh, glorious! Thanks, Hellboy, for the host. You can be mine. You can be mine. <laughs> You can be my wingman any time. So, so these two guys here, the Blitzer, uh, who is he? Number two Blitzer and number 11 Lino. Those two making like a little screen in front of the ball carrier. I like that a lot. I use that quite a lot. The the one going out further in front because it makes obviously the dodge around harder and it makes the dodge in easier, but the dodge in is still not easy, is it? It's still a five plus, um, which isn't something people want to be trying. Uh, so yeah, I like I like that manoeuvre. Let me just try and get people. I'll try to overcommit here a bit. It doesn't just because if I overcommit the orcs and the orcs commit enough, maybe I can reverse it on them. But what a lot of pe pe new people will do will be not commit enough or overcommit. Um, I guess that's I guess that's one of the biggest skills, right? Is is knowing how much to commit, and in times and obviously, even veterans or good players or whatever will 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 overcommit or undercommit, and then you'll think after your turn, shit, I should have moved an extra guy down there, or maybe I shouldn't have moved so many guys here, and there'll be times when you've got to move more guys there. So it's interesting, isn't it? But I like getting that thrower out there to to also stop. If it was just two players, it'd been really easy to blitz this lineman, or blitz this. Blitzer, but now with him out, that gets in the way a little bit, doesn't it, to make things a bit harder. I'm really far forward here, though. This is, I mean, I'm, I've probably gone too far forward. 
even here to be honest because I really do want to score turn 8 I don't want to score too early especially if I've got 3 guys off the pitch so maybe I'll be trying to get back in, fu in future turns we'll see though hello hello Sana89 um, what do you think I should do Jimmy? What do you think you should do this turn? I would say... What, what, what do you think you should do? <laughs> I don't know, you're the coach. Alright, I would say um, blitz the thrower because he is armor 8 unprotected and you can get a 2 dice blitz block on him. And then try to base up my guys that are furthest forward to you know, kind of put some pressure on me. You've got, you've got to put pressure on, on defense and it is hard now you're down players. So... I mean, I don't think anybody in the world would be having, feeling good about themselves right now in this spot. You know, it's uh, you are you have lost three players as well. That's that's really unlucky, through no fault of your own as well. It was li literally minimal, minimal block. Now, don't do that <laughs> because it's only one dice, right? You can't that he isn't assisting this black orc because he is in a tackle zone himself. Two other tackle zones, in fact. So you will need another player in there to give an assist uh, in this square or this square, basically. On the stream. The old orc thrower. Right. So now you can, you can choose whether to base here or not. You know, it's... It's not right or wrong. Kind of more basing gives pressure in a way, but then also it makes it easier in a way. You know, it's it's six and two threes. It really is. It's tough. You might want to make a GFI with that black hawk at the end of the turn to get him in. Uh, definitely, so probably. That's should've... what actually I was planning. Yeah, good. Definitely want to move that blitzer back to like you know the center square at the back. I think so that you've got him able to react. And. Also, these guys, you probably should have stood up the first well before. I mean, I'm, there was only a 1 in 12, 9, 6 chance of your blitz failing. But, it happens, so you probably should have stood these blitzes first. Um, and then Where you do you think, think the Blackhawk should go? Sorry? Where do you think the Blackhawk should go? The, the GFI. Where, where do I think he should go? Um, I would say, yeah, that second one, like, kind of further forward. Yeah. Didn't roll a one, very good. And then with this lineman, you could think about sticking him in, in you know, in the same line as the Black Orcs. But also you could think about putting him where this human lineman is, so that to try and stop me. But then you you've got to think like what my turn is going to be and what my players are going to be and stuff, haven't you? Might just drop him back, uh, stick him in the line. But basically, where you put him is going to dictate what I do. So you want to think about, at the moment, what my players are going to be, where my blocks are going to be. Probably going to block this guy down with an assist. Try to get a two dice on your thrower, maybe. And then hit this, hit both black orcs if I can. Um, so if you bring this guy down here, that's going to make that harder for me. But then it's going to make coming back up the pitch easier for me. So, yeah, you've got to think about dictating the play, I guess. Could GFI to base the top blitzer, yeah. Uh, or was that something else? I don't know. Hippie would have considered something. But I don't think he'd consider it too. Yeah, press without re without allowing to reverse the field. Yeah, the reverse is is something you've always got to watch for. A lot of a lot of beginners or bad players will allow reverses that they really shouldn't allow. So yeah, that, that's obviously making the reverse harder, but at the expense of making the not reverse easier, if you see what I mean. Right. So we run around there. Ah, shit. <laughs> I really wanted a power there. So now, that's looking dodgy for me, isn't it? 
He could 2D with the loner. So he could 2D and free an extra man up. So I think the Blitz is just going to come here to try and make things safe. <laughs> really? <laughs> um, hmm. I could one dice the black hole. Right, so the ball's pretty safe there, I think. This is greedy and arguably stupid. Good. Also, I should have done a safe move first there, standing up this throw. Right, so again, keep him away from, from the action as much as possible. He can get two dice by him. Right. I quite like this. Basing basing the org thrower. And a three plus. Ah, I can do a two D here first. So I mean this is the danger by like choosing to kind of go man's a bit whilst down men. You are obviously giving up blocks, um, but when they double skulls, it's not bad to give up blocks. Ooh, they could be a very good player this turn. Um, could be. Not, not easy to take a 3 plus. Do you think it's worth making a 3 plus to try and hit the ball? It's your drive, so maybe not. I think three plus to hit the ball carrier is is usually a pretty decent idea. Um, so there's multiple ways you can go around the ball here. Actually, no, this is the easier way to get the ball. Hmm. You need a pow on the second block. No, it's. it's Need a push on the first block, power on the second block. I don't know. <laughs> what you could do here is you could dodge away this guy, this blitzer, put him in there, put the other blitzer in there, block him, and then chain forward so that you get just a block on the ball with a black orc. But a block on the ball doesn't have block. So you might be better off just hitting with a black orc, hitting with a thrower, and then trying to blitz the ball with a blitzer. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. But obviously hit the ball if you can. Pretty much if you can if you can two dice the ball pretty easily without making dodges or GFIs, it's usually a good idea. If you've got to make a dodge, it it might be good. It depends on the situation. Now obviously this situation, three players off versus one off, a three plus to hit the ball is looking a lot better than it than it normally would. Um but yeah, I'd probably just go for the I'd probably go just go for these blocks here. So that, that's that's great. Um, and don't follow up because following up uh, blocks you. Now, so the, the thrower can block him, but he can't get an assist at the moment. So you have to block with the the black orc has to block my thrower um, and get a push to to get the the assist for him. Yep, very good. I follow this. Yeah, I would. I would. I would. I would follow. I basically, if if it was a if it, you always want to keep down players in tackle zones. That's what I think. Um, and, and like, really, the only reason to not do that is to facilitate something else. So now you really need a pow here. Oh, that's not a pow. <laughs> yeah, insta reroll. Um, pow him. So push him towards your end zone and don't follow up. Is, is what you have to do here. Oh no, 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 Shawnee, no! 
I can't blitz so still. Yeah, you had to put him towards your end zone, you know, like directly down. There was there was two there was two choices. And if you had gone the directly back, that opened up the space there, see? So that was I don't know if it was a misclick or a mistake, but that was uh that that would have been your two dice on the ball there. Um I'll just say it's a misclick for chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um you can still you can still probably base the ball, but uh, yeah, that's that's a shame because you know after getting the if you just pushed him, you could have then blitzed him on two dice as well and probably that was a really that was a really bad one. Um, I don't know what to do now. Maybe one, two, three, four, five, six. GFI. That's basing the ball doesn't seem too appealing. Um, a one die split after using reroll doesn't seem so appealing either. Um, so, I would say, think what you want to do with that blitzer. Maybe, maybe base one of my blitzers. Um, or maybe just leave him, maybe just move him next to the other blitzer. I don't know, he's still got, he's still got a good amount of pressure on. If you move him there, he could get surfed. Um, so I would... You know, and also if you, so, where you're going to move there, you wouldn't. You would have a free space here for me to move across. So if you were going to base that blitzer, I would put him, you know, the other side of the down dog, so that, uh, yeah. I just told him always. No, I said usually. Usually, I said usually. <laughs> I just realised. Just read this chat. Um. So yeah, you you usually want. Knocked over players based, but yeah. not always, but nearly all. Oh God! All right, so now that was a good turn. If, good. No. <laughs> even though he didn't get the base, didn't get to hit the ball. That is three removed. Um, so now we're both on it. We're on eight versus eight, and my three are all permanent instead of uh, just KOs. So that was a huge, huge KO. Um, yeah, huge KO, huge cars. Right, so I can probably stall in the corner here for another turn. Um, that's probably going to be it. Maybe I could blitz out and go to the other side. That might be an idea. Let's do it then. Hope for a pow. Fish for a pow here. Oh. Hmm. This is horrible. <laughs> but it looks like you're going to do a pretty good job here of, like, you know, by just shepherding down the sideline. Now, obviously, there was a chance of a hit on the ball. But, um, even without that hit on the ball, it's still, you know, by not, by just not committing too much and you know by like putting a lot of pressure on there's a I found myself in a bit of trouble but maybe that was my fault for going going down too fast That's about all I can do, I think. So now I would say you definitely want to slam in with pretty much everyone you've got. Um, but, you know, try to do it in such a way as to make things as hard as possible for me next turn. Um, so you've got to think about, you know, how, how which blocks I can make and where the tackle zones are and everything. Um... And all, all that sort of thing, you know, try to just make it impossible for me to stall next turn. Um, yeah. Yeah, I still want to stall as long as possible, yeah. Because, you know, if I'd score that turn, Orcs have got four turns, they can score in four turns. Now that if I score this turn, they, you know, three turns is a lot harder. Right. 
yes, Big Mike, yes, burning, burning turns. That that is exactly. Yeah, if this wasn't a practice game, I would be already very sad. Yeah, but no. To be fair, look, we've 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 removed equal players. So um. So yeah, I put the Black Hawk. Um, what is he? Black Hawk number nine, the last Frogman. Um. To the square below that down blitzer. That to me seems a good place. Uh, below him on your screen, yeah. Because that that makes it now hard for me to like blitz through that direction. Uh, obviously, pick up this blitzer here because it doesn't take any dice. He definitely wants to stand up. Um, and now, yeah, blitz this lino with uh, with him now. This is fine. So some people would greet that I wouldn't greet it. I would just, I would just, you know, be sad that <laughs> I didn't do anything. Go be sad. Yeah, I'd definitely be sad. I'd push him so he's next to Black Hawk. And then follow because you're like all man's in at this point. And then get the lineman and the thrower into these two squares to like, you know, completely keep us completely hemmed in. So like that, that's a lot of pressure. I mean, I, I don't think I can can stall at all here. Um, you know, because those, the, especially with the, the Black Hawks having like the hinges, you know, hinges on the hinges? I don't know, corners, whatever. With the, with the Black Hawks on the out, you know, on the flanks kind of thing, it makes it a lot harder for me to bust through and reposition. I think this dodge is a good idea because if you don't dodge, you know, if you dodge, you're 33% to fall over. If you get two dice by an ogre, you're 55% to get knocked over with Mighty Blow. So, yeah, you, you've got to think about, obviously, it frees up my ogre to do something, um, which might not be a good idea. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Bookends, yeah. Something, something. Hinge wasn't really. I was thinking the hinge. I use them as hinges on offense, and but this isn't on offense, so it was wrong. <laughs> right. I could blitz with the ogre here. Oh, fuck off this thing. If I blitz with the ogre, then that could let me chain somebody out. Um. I could dodge. I just read all the. I think I'm just going to score here. There's may maybe something I could do. But um, honestly, not a lot. I've only, I've only got one reroll, so you know I could bring this guy in here, make a two dice block with the uh, blitzer. But if it's a double skull, I've got to reroll it, and that's just horrible, isn't it? I think the ogre blitz would give me the best chance of stalling another turn. Um, you know, move him to here, block him down. Then there's there's a dodge or something, but nah. I think I just go. Yeah, hinges, hinges are glorious. No one of death. <laughs> Thank you very much Who for staying. Who do you think fantastic. is winning the Royal Rumble? Oh, do you know what, Milkman of Death? I have, I have no idea. I completely forgot the Royal Rumble was happening. So thank you very much for reminding me that it's actually going to happen. I know Goldberg was a hundred to one. No, Vin Diesel was hundred to one in the bookies, <laughs> which, <laughs> which seemed a bit ridiculous for someone who's got literally zero chance of winning. Um, but. Yeah, that's that's interesting, isn't it? Um, thank you for reminding me. I will I will actively watch the Royal Rumble now. Um, okay, so well played, Last Frogman, because that was I think I think 
you know, I think that that there typifies how you how you make somebody score early. You know, like obviously I had less options, having less strength as humans. I was kind of forced into making a bit of a a bit of an early push, which I wouldn't wouldn't do by choice, really. Um, but yeah, it was good. And uh, Roman Reigns. Oh God, yeah, Roman Reigns. Of course, of course it is. Of course it's Roman. Reigns. Um, right, there was something in chat anyway. Apart from the, apart from that. Uh, yeah, hinges swinging around as you turn the flank. Yeah, on offense I call them hinges. I, I if so, on defense they're the opposite of hinges, but I don't know what that is. So yeah, door stop. But yeah, I like to have strong players there so I can turn, turn and go upfield. But obviously they were shut down by the. So yeah. So the Black Hawks were on my hinge, on my hinges, if you like. Yeah. So now offense, offense for the Orcs. He's got the Orc thrower for the short hands. <laughs> Who is Kick the Orc? For the rain. Orc thrower. Yeah, in the rain. Imperator Augustus. Orc thrower in the rain. Oh my god. But now you got on the man advantage, haven't you? I'm down to three. Uh, can't count. <laughs> Nine players, and then. Uh, Oh no, it's nine versus nine. Alright, so the fact you've got a score in three turns means you probably want um, you know, everybody on the LOS to get them just as far forward as you possibly can get. Uh, obviously not the thrower. <laughs> the thrower's got to stay back where he is. Perfect. Sure, I can put him up. M maybe, <laughs> maybe the thrower could even go back one um, so that if the, if the kick is deep, he can get one further forward. Um, you know, like if if the ball's too behind him at the, at the moment, if the ball lands too behind him, he'd have to go back two, and then forward three. Whereas now he'd only have to go back one and get to go forward four. Um, so, yeah. So, you, and then you can think about if you're going to try to brute force down one side, which might be the best play. So maybe bring, you know, maybe bring everyone over to one half, one one side. And try to smash through um, is what most people do in this situation, I think. Anchors, yeah, anchors, yeah, defensive anchor. That's a good. That's a good thing. Two nil final over in the money game. Was that two nil to the chops? Wow. Wow. Um. Wow, I'm, I'm surprised. So, as it was, hmm. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> Not good for me. Good kick for me. So, uh, so, so you've got to think if you're going to make the GFI to pick up this turn. If you're not going to make the GFI to pick up this turn, you probably just want to stand next to the next to the ball. Um, first action. I guess I would make the GFI to pick it up. Um, oh, yeah, you could bring him back to. I I personally probably wouldn't have got cover for the thrower because you know you want kind of offensive threats for me to deal with um but so your blitz is probably going to be on one of these hu these liners one of these humans that's helpful isn't it <laughs> one of these uh linemen because they don't have block so i'd move in you know the black oak for the assist and blitz with block and get try to get forward a bit Tackles on very good. Oh, God, uh, I would have followed as well there uh, to get like you know further forward with him because you can always just you know you could always choose to go somewhere else afterwards. 
That's a lot of the, a lot of the time if I've You can be my wingman anytime. Oh thanks Goliath Games. Four. You can be mine. Um Blitz the blister and go down the side, would you Wolfbark? Well I, I like the 75% knockdown when you're trying to break through rather than the 55% knockdown. I think if you blitz the blitzer and, and, and get both down, it really screws you there. So I would I would definitely always go for the uh always go for the uh one of the linemen in that situation. But then that's why I put the lineman there, right? Because you would rather go down the sideline. So that's why I put my harder to hit people down the sideline. Um, harder to knock over players. That 2D was okay. However, you could have made a 2D with a lineman next to him, which would have freed up that Black Hawk. And then that Black Hawk could have based a blitzer to stop, you know, to limit my movement somewhat. I would get that other blitzer forward. Keefy85, I'd get him forward so that you've got, you know, another guy who could score potentially. Then re-roll the one in nine. Um, hmm? Don't know. Don't know. Uh... See with the yeah, that's okay. I'd also get that get that line move. So yeah, you want to you want to count the squares. So at the moment I can base you with my blitzer there. So maybe you want to make a GFI back so that I can't base you, or bring the other blitzer back to protect him. Um, neither of which are very appealing. You could also just move this Doctor Mama Bosco. You could move so he's two spaces in front of my blitzer. So that I'd have to dodge and GFI twice to base the ball, which seems like not nothing I'd want to do. Though if you do that, you put him in ris you risk him getting surfed, because I could blitz your blitzer, put him in the sideline and surf him. So it's not easy. I mean, I guess I'm not going to try to surf him just because I'm worried about just trying to stop these guys scoring. I think I do definitely put the catcher um, here. Just, you know, he's a scoring threat. Um, and I guess I blitz one of the further forward blitzers. And Herb Dirt base, base, base the other one. Maybe should have kept them two squares apart as well, those guys. Um, so that I couldn't mark them up as easily. If they were like, if he was downed, they'd both be marked pretty well then. Uh, right. Yeah, also now, this gap. If you were going to block with that Blackhawk, I think it would have been better to have had these two linemen here, uh, like, you know, side by side on the LOS. Because now with this gap has let my uh, Ogre free up space on a knockdown. Um, so greedy, greedy non-follow then. <laughs> Looking for the removal, which found it. But I mean, I'll want him to stay with these guys. So now this frees him up, doesn't it? Which I can tag that blitzer, I guess. I could have tagged the ball. I could have even blitzed the ball, couldn't I? Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six. I could have GFI twice and one diced the ball. Um, if I'd, but then it would have been risky to have activated the ogre first before that. But it's something that could have happened. Yes, exactly, BZL. I meant to say that. Yes, what one square forward means that he's a scoring threat without GFI. It's very important um, for orcs and stuff like it. You know, chaos as well. Movement six, one square over the halfway line you want so that you're in scoring range with without GFIs in the sub subsequent turns. So what are you thinking for this turn, Last Frogman? 
I'm gonna try to score, so. Right. Do you have a, like a plan of how to get forward safely? Just potato it, I guess. Just potato it. <laughs> Um, we arrive of EU XXX. Yeah, I guess there is a good potato. Thank you very much, Goliath Games. Um, so yeah, so the the obvious potato then is this pass. Now before you do that pass, I would do some safer things, which is um, two dice blocks for cats. Yes, the, this two, in particular the black orc hitting this lineman. Yeah. I'd do that one. It's it's a little bit risky, one in nine, but pow and then keep him um, you know, close to your end zone. So cause then he'll be like away from the action and follow. So this this move lets the black orc um I guess the black orc should just come in first actually. The black orc can go into these two you know this row of three, he can go into those two guys. Somewhere. Yeah, that's good. He needs a GFI. Right, so yeah, just do the you could just do the pass, because it's a pass or a GFI one way or the other. And what I would do with this with this blitzer here would make the would actually make the GFI to base my my blitzer there. Um but it's risky, you know, because obviously that now if you do that GFI and you fail it. You haven't got anyone in scoring range. So then you might want to... So it's just hard, you know. It's hard whether that's worth doing or not. Um, you might just want to do the pass first. It's tough. It's a pretty tough turn, to be fair. It can all go really well if you do the pass first. I would have put in the two squares higher up on your screen. So that you would have basically... You know, it would have protected yourself for them. Okay, throw... Orc throw a time now. And like yeah, no GFIs. GFI the no, because you've got pass, um you probably want to keep your reroll for the for the catch. And and use use his mighty throwing ability. A double one. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Um he's going quite well, Goliath. Uh, he's made he's made some made some cars. There you go, do so so I mean that was tough. So you could have just moved the throw of the blitzer first, so that he would have been, you know, in range even if you failed the throw um, or the catch. But obviously by doing the pass first, if you if I think the better play would have been Johnny Five there, two squares further forward, right? Then if you'd done this pass, you can blitz my blitzer, pow him. And then keep going, and now it's re you know I'd have to dodge through a tackle zone and hit the ball. Um, as it is now, though, I've got the chance of scoring myself, haven't I, with um, some crazy rolls somehow, um, which is interesting. But yeah, I was very unlucky. <laughs> Double one. So yeah, GFI or anything would have been that Could block him. He could GFI twice to one dice. He's not in range. He could stand up, he could block. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, double GFI. Could just do an ogre dodge. Which is good. So I just think I have to double GFI to get a one dice push here. I think that's best with a with a reroll and in the rain. And now this guy needs to pick up and hand off, doesn't he? Oh, 
Nearly rolled some dice there. Um, yes, I do have scoring threats in my own, which you had to consider. That's true. That's true. You should have considered my scoring threats. Um, which actually got pretty close there. Um, right, so now you don't really have a scoring threat, do you? With uh, with failing the pass. Roll some cast. Yeah, just try it. Try it. Just punch some people. Yeah, two dice blocks. Um, with block. <laughs> Good. Then you can go an extra square to yep get the assist for the orc thrower. Very good. Could greed could greed that seeing as there's only you know two Ds left. There's only two more two Ds left, isn't there? The black orcs. Another 2D here, you can stand up that blitzer and then uh, put him into assist to get a 2D with the uh, lineman there. It is, it is it is tough to make a two or three turn with all in the rain. I mean, it, and then it was still a double one anyway, but, but, but um, it stopped it. So can't be too sad about that. Two two black orcs still out. Lovely. Oh God, four cats. I <laughs> would be pretty. I'd be pretty salty if this was a real a real human team. <laughs> Both at eight players. Yeah, that's it's uh eight versus nine, isn't it? You've got nine. Missing I I guess eight you we've both got eight players, but you've got an orc thrower in addition to eight players. <laughs> I really count them. <laughs> Yeah, so here you want to, you know, obviously, you've got to decide, are you happy with a 1-1? One, one, or do you want to try to push for the 2-1 win? Um, what do you think? No, I, th I think I'm pretty happy with the draw. Right. So in that case, um, you don't need to think about, like, you know, pushing forward crazy, crazy fast or anything. You just want to work out how you can get two dice blocks on the lineman and a two dice block on the ogre. So you obviously want to have the uh, black orc where he can hit the ogre after the... So the, the, the easy way to do it would be black orc directly in front of the ogre, blitzers directly in front of the lineman, and then people either side. You know, so that you you just get two dice, two dice, two dice with block, another two dice with block, and then two dice with a black hog. That's like the easy way of doing it. Yeah. Need the need them blitzes on the LOS. Sorry, Stinson. Right, so this this isn't 
the best way? Do you want? If, do we have time to get the best way? I don't know. So yeah, if you, if you swap the uh, blitzers with the the line orcs with the swap the line orcs with the blitzers. So so this is the easy way, right? It's just two dice with block, two dice with block, and then two dice without block. However, if you move your black swap your black orc with a blitzer, um, either one either one there. So he's like diagonal, gone diagonal now. And then swap that lineman with the other blitzer. Um, so that you know that blitzer can hit diagonally forward. Yep, and then the same with the other one so that there's a blitzer in front of the ogre. Uh, the blitzer with a lineman, you need to swap. The lineman in the centre, swap with a blitzer. With a blitz, you need to get a blitzer in the, on the centre square. Good. So now, now what you can do is, um, this blitzer can block this lineman and push him and keep him in contact and push him into another block. Block. This and then you can, um, you know, so you can get extra blocks there. This lineman can come in for one forward so that. Uh, Dr. Momo Bosco can block with block. He won't get an additional block. But then the Black Orc can punch the, uh, you know, can push the Ogre across the LOS to get another two dice block from the other Black Orc. So th this gives you so many more follow up blocks. And they're all relatively safe, seeing as you've got block and uh, three rerolls. So this just LOS is so much better. The only thing is, you might want to protect against Blitz a little bit by putting. The guys on the ends just put them like you know two squares out or something. Yeah, running out of time now. It, it doesn't matter too much because you know. Okay, so. Ah, that that should have been the, that lineman that was out, not that blitzer. But it doesn't matter too. But it's still it's still not a bad setup. This, so yeah, the center blitzer to hit the line Harold Advar <laughs> is the thing, I think. Yep, so you can take the boat down with block, get him down. Oh, God. <laughs> Right, and then you can move that lineman, Tony plays poorly, move him diagonally forward one to get the assist in. Because the others can't, obviously. And then, yeah, Dr. Mom Bosco, smash this guy. Got a so now, see, this, this just puts you in much better than you would have been, because now, um, Run the mad can block, and if it's only a push, you get a, an extra block from the black orc. See, and in fact, what you could do is, yeah, if, if you fo you can follow. If you if you hadn't followed, you could have even brought in the assist from the blitzer, and then two deed with the kurgol into another two dice, you know, it's like that that'd be a bit, a bit greedy. I, I think I would just go for the block block from the black orc here. The reason being if it was a push you could put him away from your players because it's a power you can put him next to the other black orc, yeah. And follow, yeah. But if it had been a push I would I have get him. disappointed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Didn't kill him. Um before picking up um, you've still got your blitz, right? So the blitzer on your left, Jam Toast, he's in a good spot because he's screening. Um, you want to move in, obviously, the lineman to assist. Yep. And then get your get your two D in with block. You want to go behind that that lineman now to shore it up, because that that actually put you know that gave me a chance there with a four plus three plus dodge, 
Um, I would have kept him in front of the lineman. Um, so yeah, I would, I would definitely move him there now. But yeah, like, yeah, because that otherwise it's just too easy. We're all four. I, now I wouldn't try a four plus three plus, but people would. <laughs> so you've got to think about what people would try, um, not just what you would try. Sure, hands no good. And to be fair, I could have, if he hadn't gone there, I could have just blitzed this lineman and then done a 3 plus dodge, which I, I might have done. Uh, but yeah, I don't have many players left. So, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> I think I just have to blitz this lineman and, and try to get my throw, my catcher in a scoring position as like the only thing I can possibly do. I just stand these guys up. Watch them get killed. Complete overcommit and hope for another failed pickup. Hey. Get banged Dead. on. Yeah, plus if I was elves, yeah, you would definitely want to play safe against elves. Yeah, for sure. So not, not much of a threat, actually, because I really wanted to get the push there. Because that's actually cost me a square. Oh, no, there's a guy there. So that's... All right. I'll go here. Uh, I need a GFI to be a scoring threat. So let's go. <laughs> so, yeah, only make GFIs like that when, you, when it's calculated that you actually require it. <laughs> and then roll a one anyway. <laughs> That's good advice. <laughs> so yeah, now, before even you made that block, what you probably should have done was um, taken Jam Toast there, you know, just back to defend a little bit, I would say. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. And you've got J5. Well, you, you could do that, but I would go for blitzing the catcher, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because now I'm no longer in scoring range. <laughs> um, you've got to think about screening, though, and you don't have any players that can move freely. Oh, you do. You've got the... You've got the Lyman there. So you've got, I've got one player who can move freely and he can make the screen. So I'd think about moving J5 one to the left there. Uh, no, you're right. You're right. Sorry. You're right. Shit. shit. Good. <laughs> yep. And then Tony plays poorly can, can make that a screen then. Yeah, that's good. Uh, although, actually, I would say one square back from where he actually was. Obviously, you can't make the GFI now. Actually, no, this is good because now there's a screen here as well. Um, if you're one square back, th that would make this undodgeable through. At the moment, this is just a three plus to get through here. So it's a little bit weak having, having you know, on this on this diagonal is a bit weak, of a weak, a weak link. But then if you were one back, then I could just dodge out here on a three plus. So it's kind of good that I can't do that as well. There are basically pluses and minuses to everything. See, follow up there would have been, would have been, good in a way because you'd be occupying my players. Um, if it was just, you know, if you had, if you'd got a push, and you'd followed, I think it'd been a horrible follow up because I would just be getting a free two dice. But at least if you'd followed there, I'd have had to pick a player up and make a block, and he's in the tackle zone anyway. So it, you know, it, you'd have been pretty safe there. If you're going to make that block, you've got to try to pick up the ball first. <laughs> um, and I wouldn't move him up there either, yeah. Keep him behind. Um, so, like, four squares. For I would Maybe two to the left. Two to the right, sorry. Two to the right, as you look at it. Um, 
but then forward as well from from where you were so like three like a a a, a horse knight move <laughs> um kind of forward you know oh god it's hard to say isn't it forward three and then left one for you yeah that's the one so then you've got your options open as much as possible and that also shows up this hole of being a 3 plus now it's a 4 plus because you've got an extra tackle zone where I'd be dodging too um, I think on offence you always want to remain as central as possible um, to keep your kind of options open as much if you can keep your options open as much as possible very uh, very greedy one dice block there I think <laughs> uh, but fair, fair enough Uh, can maybe base the ball here. The classic ball basing uh, phenomenon. Ah, I can even go this way. See, so if you'd, if you'd followed up there, you'd have been pretty tricky to deal with. Um, and it would have stopped this assist, which would have been potentially crucial. So I want to get him more in the way by going diagonal. Oh god. Hooked up. Base, base, base. <laughs> and get him in as well for the double base. Right. So you, you could chain him out there. Um, but you'd need a pal. There's a few ways you could do it. But then, you know, I've got a bit of pressure on having her. So what is your thinking for the next turn? I don't know, I could try to chain him out. You could, so... The, the ways you can do it is, you can put in... Jam Toast in, like, you know, to make it a square of four players. And then you can blitz the catcher and hope for a pow. And if you get the pow, you've got a great one, two, three, four, five play, pass it to this blitzer and he can potato. But then you don't want a potato because I, I haven't got many players either. So so that, there's, there's, there's one chain out is the kind of simple one hitting the, blitz, the catcher, but you need a pow. The other way would be to bring in uh, Johnny Five there to make a line of three. Bring in Dr. Momo Bosco for the assist. And then uh, Blitz, Stefan Adva, the, well, Blitz the Blitzer. And then you can chain your guy out. And you then you get him on a push power as well. And then also you've got, I think that's the best, because then you're, mm, I don't know, it's not easy. That stun actually might have hurt you a bit. I'll pick up the, the, the two guys first, or whatever happens. Uh, these these two down players definitely stand them up first in a, in a safe moves first kind of fashion. Ash would be proud. Pardon? Ash would be proud. Oh, I can't hear. But yeah, that's it. He could just dodge with a ball, but I think that's you know incredibly risky because it's basically you get more payoff though. So it's not even it's not even wrong to dodge. It's just more risky, but with more reward. Because if you dodge away there, then that means you could blitz this lineman. Um, Fucking Seneschal Hamlin there, number 10. You could blitz him and make actually quite a good cage for the ball. So it, it wouldn't even be wrong to, to dodge away, though it's just not something that I would like to ever do, you know, even even if he was agility four. If I can if I can do chains or whatever to, to stop a blitz to stop a dodge, I will do personally. I would always go the, the, the less risky route. Uh, but there's certainly uh, I didn't always do it actually. I did when I was playing the Dark Elves recently I did just make an ogre dodge. <laughs> Uh, with dodge, so it, you know you got to weigh it up. What 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 you think? Okay, I'll go for the chain. Uh, how do I set this up? Right. So uh, do you want to do you want to go for the, just the the more likely chain? Yeah. I, I think that's probably the idea. So you've got the line of uh, the thrower and then the catcher. So then you need to put the uh, Johnny Five directly, like you know, in line with those. There's three. No, 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 no. It, it, in in line with your thrower and the catcher. 
So it'll be like thrower, catcher, blitzer. No, no, no. Other, other side? Yep, there you go. There you go. <laughs> right. And then you want to move Dr. Mama Bosco so that he is... Uh, he is basically two squares to the left of Johnny Five. Yep. Yep, that's right. Um, so now... Yeah, you can blitz with Jam Toast, and you can push him if you pow him. Even if you don't pow him, you yes, yeah, so you got to blitz. You got to blitz with him, and uh, yeah, you probably want just want to push him straight forward and then move the catcher away, kind of thing. You know, push him into the catcher and then move the catcher away from the ball. That's what I would say. So you can re-roll it if you want, but um, yeah, okay, didn't. So, yeah, I'll, I'll push him into the catcher and then move the catcher away. And, yeah, and then, so now because you had squares left, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have ever followed there, right? Because you've got, you've got the movement. So if you want to follow, you, you just can, you know, later. Um... But as it is, I think even if I'm gonna even if I'm gonna leave him there, I wouldn't follow up, and then I would just think about where else I could go. It's pretty tricky now. Um, so this is where, because you've gone for the chain, you are a bit screwed because now you haven't got it, and I I would just block with the thrower now. He's got a two dice block. It le it leaves it a bit up to chance, but um, yeah, so you just push him into that hole there. There's a lot of pressure on now, so so you could definitely argue that uh, yeah, as Mellow Gold said, chain pushes hard to keep the ball safe. After that, that was the thing. Even if you chained him away, it wasn't easy to keep the ball safe. Whereas, but then the dodge is eight out. You know, one in nine, you just lose the game, which is pretty horrible, isn't it? <laughs> so it's it's interesting though now, isn't it? This no players got something going. I I don't think you can activate that black hole because obviously uphill block, ill. You, you know, you, I guess you could try a dodge, but it would be freeing up my ogre, which would be bad. And he's not really going anywhere super important. So I think, I think you've just got to pass the turn there. So, I mean, I've got an incredibly easy one dice on the ball. And then, if I want, not a hard two dice on the ball. Um, I mean it would be a dodge and I wouldn't have the recovery also I could chain him to block the ball um, but that's not really any point yeah the dodge is horrific too yeah exactly you, you really don't want to just say oh one one time in nine I just lose the game that's a horrible position to be in I think actually this guy just wants to consolidate here not activate the ogre because the ogre's doing a good job keeping the strength falls in line like if I'm greedy I go for the one dice hope for a 50-50 and then dodge away the catch up to score the safer play is to go for the horrible one in nine dodge but then I get two dice on the ball, making it much more likely to pop it. Um, but then there's just no recovery at all, so I think I'm going to go. Or I could dodge with this guy to get two dice. But then, if I make the dodge, I almost would have made the block. So I'll just go for the fucking living dangerously one dice blitz. Get the pow, dirty boy. No, so that you could say that I shouldn't follow because um, I might catch it. But I think basing this guy is a pretty good place to be. Didn't catch it as well. Oh god! Right, he definitely wants to go here. Insta reroll, of course. Got the ball, but the reroll is gone for the turn. Three plus two plus a two dice in. Um, in 
for. Uh, can't really stop that. Just got to think whether to do a two plus. Oh man, two minutes to think about it. <laughs> so I could dodge him out to try and screen a bit, I guess. So maybe I should moved him in the wrong place. Maybe I should have moved him here. And then gone for a 3 plus to screen. It's pretty hard for him. I know he could block him, he could block him. Two. Hmm. This is tough. This is tough because. I really don't want him, you know, obviously, if I roll a 1, <laughs> the ball can go in the crowd. Um. But if I'm 2 0 up, I've pretty much won, haven't I? So fuck it. <sighs> Lucky boy. So, like, it's easy to say there, because that happened, that the chain was the wrong play. But then, on the other hand, if you'd gone for the dodge with a ball carrier um, and failed it, <laughs> and then that had happened, that would have looked like the wrong play, wouldn't it? So. Tough. <laughs> Pedro Jack being very lovely in, in chat there. But I mean that's the thing, isn't it? Orcs just don't have enough time to score too. Uh, they do technically have enough time to score too, but it's gonna be very, very hard for them to score twice. Right, so now, now that you've got less turns to score, I mean, I guess you just want to go for a concept. Maybe the maybe chance of scoring here. So now I've actually left the uh, lineman on the on the far on your far right, haven't I? So I'd definitely put your blitzers on your right hand side and try to blitz that guy to move down the side. That was pretty pretty unlucky in terms of the kick there after committing to go down the side. So now you've got to think if you still want to commit your blitz down to try and break through or if you want to blitz one of these two blitzers to kind of shore up the offence, you know, because, I mean, there's still a danger, obviously. Yeah, I think you would want to uh, consolidate. So Johnny Five can block the lineman first, I guess. Like the centre blitzer block, the the other one actually. I would have blocked the other one, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But just block away and don't follow is uh, is fine. And then uh, uh, it's tough because you don't have block on these guys, you know. Because the idea was to blitz through, so it's it. This is looking like bad, but <laughs> it was unavoidable, really. This is a nice place for the blitz at the block because it'll get him into my half so that he's a you know he can score in two more turns. Yeah, I'd definitely choose the power here to to get him into the half. Um yeah, this is all gone a bit wrong, hasn't it? It's all gonna bit gonna be Got a bit Pete Tong. Um, I guess your Black Hawk has to block that lineman on the LOS now. That's good. And uh, yeah, he's just got to go out to. Yeah, that's all. That's all you can do really. At this point, uh, maybe he's one more so that he's. Uh, He's actually, you know, fully doing it and then committed some GFIs here. This black orc will have to make... Ooh, 
I would have gone for the black or making a GFI first because if you fail the pickup now, you'd have been up shit creek. <laughs> Seventy-five percent. Yeah, I would go the GFI with a black oak to like you know screen. Yeah, that's the one. So now you could go for the knockdown the ogre. It doesn't really achieve anything. So you could still go for the breakthrough here down the sideline with an assist with a lineman, and uh, I'll assist with a lineman and blitz this this assist with your lineman um, directly in front. Yeah, like di directly in front because then what you can do is you can push my guy at the sideline and keep him completely out. Yep. And then yeah, so then blitz from yeah, that's right. So then you can you can push him onto the sideline. That's usually good even if you you know even if you're not planning to surf him or whatever later. That's a little bit unlucky. So uh it's up to you whether you keep him in contact or not. But obviously you don't follow. And now, so now you can still make the decision to move him where you would have followed, you know? Or you can just move him a couple of squares or even three more squares forward. Because it's still making it, do you know what I mean? You still, with one square you're still screening him, so he, my lineman can't do anything. If you go more squares forward then you're obviously closer to scoring. Um, but not really, so maybe just one square forward is right, yeah. I think that's pretty good. Pretty good spot there. Um. Yeah, leaving another guy backfield is certainly an argument. However, when you've only got nine players um, as a slow team, it's pretty hard to leave that. This is why I don't like stuff like kick, uh, you know, a lot of the kicker events like throw a rock and blitz and what have you. Because if you're an orc team with nine players, it's pretty hard to protect against throwing rocks and blitzes and stuff. Uh, I think I just go for basing the ball. <laughs> As much as I slate basing the ball in every in every game that I play, um, humans, you know, just don't really have that many choices to make apart from getting in the face. And plus, it's nine players, you know, so I've got an advantage where normally I wouldn't. It'd be a big difference if there was eleven orcs on the pitch. Nope. Get him on the sideline. Herb dirt, base, base, base. Obviously, Ogre's too valuable to risk a bonehead on. And this guy, I guess, has to dodge away. Otherwise, he'll be surfed. And get him back as a safety. Pretty good. Pretty good turn. Uh, didn't talk much there, did I? But never mind. <laughs> right. So now you're looking at maybe a block from the black hole could free up this second blitzer here. Hmm. That's not super exciting, is it? You can't really free up the black orcs here. It's actually probably forced into dodging with the ball carrier here. And then passing to that black, that blitzer on the other side, jam toast, I think. So I, I would go for the last frogman blocking uh, Harold Advar here, you know, and then and then just go all in on the pass play, orc thrower, orc thrower with a fucking passing play. <laughs> Not pretty, is it? Do you agree? Do you, is that like is that what you'd think? Go for kind of some hot potato action. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 <laughs> what, I, what I don't like is this is just basically, you know, just saying stuff, isn't it? It's not really. I don't know. I'm, I don't know it's what you want. You know. C 
could go for a blitz on the uh, yeah that, that's good actually you could go for a blitz on the uh, ogre now couldn't you get an assist and blitz him down with block and then make a cage for the orc throw and don't even have to make a pass play if you don't want to now that's an option yeah Colin Ancelotti it's uh yeah, the fight, the coaching is based the ball in an orc throw pass, that's true. But this is good, this is good, to be honest. I think Last Frogman has found has found the play that needed to be made. It's not even a blitz on the ogre, is it? It's just a block from that blitzer. Yeah, yeah, maybe Skuro. It's not easy, is it? I think maybe blitzing the ogre would have been better actually for the, the extra person that we were freed up. Because now, dodge away. It's pretty hard to protect him, isn't it? Yeah, I'll do the dodge first. Yeah, there you go. I haven't used the reroll. So now that, now that you've now got the reroll, you could go for one GFI at a time. If you go next to the ogre, obviously you're relying on the uh, foul working, which would be, have to be from a blitzer, which isn't great. Oh, you hand off and potato, or pass and potato, because, yeah, 2 0 down. If you actually want to win, then you've got a potato. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, true. That's fair enough. If, if you wanted to draw, you had to go for a pass and potato. Yeah. Oh, Jim Fowl. Classic Jim Fowl. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think the play was to pass it and then run away, to be honest, because, yeah, as was said, 1-0 down, 2-0 down, without getting the score there. Um... It's just whether you're going to lose two one or two nil, isn't it? Um, but that was that was a brutal gym foul, double one. <laughs> um, but yeah, it it is tough, isn't it? The, the whole live coaching thing. I don't know. I think. Should I just been asking more questions and then? And stuff. It's tough, isn't it? Right. Okay, got the got the catcher for the recovery potentially. Come on, don't fail me now, Olga. Ah, oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> Hooped up, base, base, base. I mean, we've got pretty much e even men, although I've taken four cards. Still got eight on the pitch versus eight on the pitch, so. Um, or nine on the pitch, eight, seven on the pitch now, so. Being able to all man's a low agility, low, agility, low movement team is, is pretty good, isn't it? Especially as I don't care about the team. Right, two people playing, commentating the expectation they would not listen and then watch the replay. Yeah? Ah. Big old bonehead. Do you think this has been useful, Frogman? I do. Right, good. That's good. <laughs> That's the most important thing, you know, because it's... It's fucking hard. It's hard to know what to do, and it's hard to, you know. It would be good to have like a formula of of what would be a good coaching game or whatever, and uh, you know what works and what format works and everything. Um, Play a game on ladder while I scream at you. Yeah, that on a 30 second delay, that could yeah, work. Yeah, that's what I was thinking after this. Yeah? Alright. Oh. 
So that wasn't so bad. The dodging of the blitz bad. Bad. wasn't so bad. Um, yeah, I would, I would definitely, if you're going to do the GFIs, do them one at a time. Say again. If you're going to do the GFIs, if you want to do GFIs, do them one at a time so that if you make, use your reroll, you don't have to do the second one. Yeah, Blitzer can make a great block here to uh, to free up the other lineman there. Yep. Yep, so that lineman can make it a bit of a screen, can't he? Yeah, he's got to. You know, the problem now with the black hawk, yeah, he's just got to get in. I would, I would get him below the uh, below the ogre, so he's just basing a lot of players. So yeah, that's that's kind of okay. Double GFI. Double GFI to one dice. All right then. This is, I need a power here. This is really greedy. Keep them in scoring range. Q armory og thrower. <laughs> I don't know if the armory mattered there. No, it didn't. It was double six. Fair enough. Alright, so I guess I just try to base these guys. Um, so that my guy doesn't get surfed by this black orc. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> Down. I don't have sure hands anymore. Yeah, yeah, that's not good, is it? And only two turns left as well. Uh, maybe should have followed with that black oak to save, you know, the point of movement. But uh, yeah, it's too late now. Isn't it? Three, four, five. We still got the team reroll, so might as well have, uh, might as well have sure hands. I would stay off the off the uh, sideline because it's too easy for me to just surf you here with with some decent rolls, isn't it? I think, but we'll find out if it was a costly a costly decision or not. That's good now the blitzer can make it pretty safe, can't they? Like here. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it's safe now, isn't it? I'll just pass the turns. <laughs> There's only two left. Should I try the one turner? Um, I don't know how you want to set up here anyway. Like you know, obviously I would mostly just backline it, and it seems it's a friendly game as well. But uh, uh, <laughs> me saying that makes it easier for me to get the one turn. <laughs> Should 
keep my thrower safe. Oh yeah, you've got to. He's too valuable. I don't think I have enough. Spread them out or keep them. Um, it, 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 yeah, it doesn't matter now, but yeah, spread them. I like to spread them out with one square between them. Um, and obviously make it so that people can't go down the sidelines. But I mean, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter at 2 1 down anyway, because I, I'm, not, I'm not, and I don't think I've got enough players for the one turn anyway. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I'm pretty sure I don't know. Pretty sure I don't. We'll find out the way. Can't even get them. Don't have enough players to get <laughs> Pick it up. Oh, shit. I still don't know if it's possible. I should have GFI to there. Oh, fuck. No, I still, I still don't think I could have done it. Because I needed two more guys in there and stuff. Yeah, and he needed a GFI to there. And then I still think I just needed more players. Yeah. I like how everything's work. <laughs> Everything works in a, in a meaning in a meaningless man <laughs> with no chance to succeed. <laughs> right. Well, hopefully, hopefully, you know there was some value in that fire. And uh, thanks for playing, GG. Stay fantastic. <laughs>